everybody, Jeff Harmon from phototacopodcast.com. I'm going to do a quick review of the CB48 tr ball head compared to my Siru K40X ball head. Um, the, the kind folks over at FLM were very nice to send me a copy of this ball head to go along with the CP30 legs that I also did a review for in a different video. So go check that out on my YouTube channel if you're interested in the legs. We're not going to talk about the different legs here, just the ball heads that go on top. So the difference between these two is, is pretty significant, at least as far as price goes. The Siru KX40X, it runs about a little less than $200 where this tripod is, is uh, double that. And um, it, it's very solid build quality. The folks over at FLM are doing a really good job with their tripod equipment. Um, really good manufacturer out of Canada that's doing fantastic work with tripod equipment. It's definitely high quality stuff. Intended to, to kind of be in the same market as really right stuff as far as build quality and durability goes. And my good friend Mark Morris, has, he's been an FLM guy for a while. He has loved this. He did some really good comparisons be between tripods. Between, it really right stuff was included in the mix. And he chose these for his personal use because he liked them so much. So I'm gonna just compare the features here. Again, these are not really in the same market. Build quality wise, the FLM is, is likely going to outlast the Siru head. Um, they're also feature-wise not exactly identical. So let me tell you kind of feature-wise what is different between them. One of the key differences or to start off with it has to do with how you tension the tripod. So I'm going to put on for you here my camera. This is the heaviest gear that I have that I can put on the head. And this is my Canon 7D Mark II with my 24 to 70 um, Tamron lens, so it, it's fairly heavy as, a, as gear goes. And right now, the tension knob is, is pretty much done all the way, and it, it doesn't budge. It holds super solid. So does the Siru, though. They, they both do the job of holding, you know, the key job that you need out of a tripod ball head is to hold the camera where you position it. This is one of the issues why I even invested the nearly $200 to get the Siru ball head because uh, I, was, I had the original ball head on this a lot, really inexpensive tripod here, and the ball head would never actually lock where I needed it. I would position things exactly how I wanted. I tightened the knob down, the tension knob down, so that the ball wouldn't move anymore, and then when I released, the camera would drop a little bit, especially when I had something as heavy as this on the, the ball head. Both of these will hold in place. One of the things that the Siru has, uh, sorry, the uh, FLM ball head has had complaints on has been how many turns it takes to tension the ball head so that it won't move. Let me just kind of show you as a comparison. I'll put it on the Siru ball head and you can see what the difference is. So it's locked into place, fully locked right now. If I loosen it all the way, it only takes about two turns and I've reached the limit of that tension knob. So I can move very freely. It's very nice to be able to move stuff around. And then it's only one and then, you know, half a turn really just to get it back, holding it totally solid and in place. So it does a good job there and you can get that tension knob to grab hold and do it. One of the complaints that I have seen from others on this FLM CB48 ball head has been how many tension turns it is. So I'm going to loosen it all the way. And again, I'll show you, it totally moves very, very freely. Really, really nice to be able to move that ball head exactly where it needs to be. Just totally loose and free. It's, it's smooth, not jittery. So you can get it exactly where you want it to be, and then, and then let's count the turns that it has to be. And maybe I'll move this just a little so you can see those turns a little better. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can go almost seven, about seven turns. Now it's totally solid and locked in at seven turns, but that was seven full turns all oh, well, six and three quarters, I'll say, turns to be able to get that tension knob totally to the limit where you're, you're going to know it's really locked in and, and keeping that ball from moving. And then again, one, two, three, 
four, and at four, it, it loosens. So I'm, I'm already kind of there, and I could just try to keep it there, but there is a feature of this tripod that, um, that I, I think most reviewers didn't really understand how to use. There's a memory lock right here on, this, on the, the side of the, the tension knob that I don't think most understood how it works. So the idea would be you can dial in kind of where you want the memory to be as your limit of how loose it's going to be. And then you tighten that memory lock. So right now the camera's pretty loose. It, it moves around a lot. There's a lot of weight on the tripod. If I go like one turn back, it almost holds itself. It's really close. And if I go another turn, now it doesn't move almost at all. So I want to kind of go half turn more. At least this is how I've kind of liked doing it. This way the camera gets held, but I can also move it fairly freely. It takes a little bit of force for me to do it, but I can move it fairly freely and then let go of the camera and it doesn't just drop forward. Kind of nice. So that's kind of where I would set it, but you could choose where you'd want to do it. Now, if I twist that memory lock all the way to tightening it, that is now going to be the, the new limit on looseness that this knob will turn. So now, if I'm going to lock totally in place, I just turn one, two, and three is about almost four. And so, so it, it took away a lot of what, how many turns it would be. If that's too many turns, you could do it, you could further lock it down so you didn't need it. But I, I also want to show you that even after one, two turns, even though there's more space, I can go two more turns, that camera is not moving. The ball head is already locked in place. So I would feel totally comfortable leaving my camera without holding it and letting it sit here just two turns of the tension knob. So that's, it, it works really well and can be set up so that it's more similar to how it works on a lot of other tripods. I just think a lot of reviewers haven't known how to, how to work that. You have to read the user's manual to figure that out. So memory lock and tension knob. Uh, let's go to the next feature that almost all, uh, you know, pretty good tripods have, and that's the panning lock. So that was right here, this knob. And I'll show you how it compares to the Siru. The Siru has a much smaller knob than is on this, the FLM tripod ball head here. And that, you know, that makes a difference because uh, how fast you can turn the knob has a lot to do with the size of the knob or how easy it is to turn. Like if your fingers get a little bit wet, for example, this one would be a little harder to turn um, than, than the knob on the FLM. So that kind of makes a difference too about it, about how, how that's going to work. Um, they both lock down the pan really well. And again, the, the pan knob has a lot of turn to it to, in order to lock. Once it's locked though, it stays dead locked. So at least it's doing its job, but it, there are a lot of turns. Now again, it becomes free before it, it, you have to go all the way out. So if I go even two turns, three turns, now I can turn it pretty good. So, so that helps to, uh, to have it that way. You don't have to take it all the way out and then uh, have fewer turns to take it in. So you just kind of have to, to know that. Um, they both turn very smoothly when they're released. No problem there. And they both have a way to be able to tell kind of the degrees that you are turning. I don't know if you can hear it as I am moving the tripod, but you can hear some clicks on the FLM. And I don't have that here on the Sear. And I'll tell you why. It's a good thing. It's a positive thing on the FLM ball head. But um, both have a way to be able to see kind of some degree turns as you have things mounted to it. On the Siru, it's just a little tiny window in the back of the tripod, of the ball head that does the degree angles. Um, whereas on the FLM, it's all the way around the base here. And it's, that's I found to be more helpful. I like that the, the view is all the way there. Sometimes I've had difficulty seeing the degrees here. You might wonder, well, why does that matter? So let me show you why it matters, what the degrees are as you're turning. A lot of times, the reason I have my camera on a tripod is to take a panorama of a landscape. And so I want to start on the left, and I want to pan over to the right, taking shots in between. And a really good way to do that is by moving 15 degrees at a time. 
then you have enough overlap between frames and when you take it into Lightroom or Photoshop, you can stitch those panoramas together. The computer can do it for you and figure out how to stack all those frames together and make one picture out of it. It's a really helpful thing then to have a marker so that you know when you've moved 15 degrees. And it's here on the Siru, but it's, it's a very small little window in the back here to see. And I have to manually watch really closely what the degrees are as it goes. Here's one of the features of, of the FLM. There's this 15 degree turning knob in here. When it's all the way out, the, the ball head just moves back and forth smoothly like it does on the Siru. When it is in and tightened all the way, there is a click that happens as you move. And so every click is 15 degrees and I can know when to stop based on kind of feeling that click happen. Or you can watch, there's an arrow here so you can watch the degrees, but if you're doing a, a night panorama shot that's so nice, a Milky Way shot for example, it's really nice to have that click there and be able to feel that the 15 degrees are, are in. So that's a really nice feature. I do have to say, at least on this version of the ball head, uh, that it, it's not as distinctive a click as I would want. I really want it to be something I could feel. I can hear it okay as I'm clicking. You might be able to be picking that up on the video too, but I can't really feel it click as solidly as I'd want so that it's totally as helpful as uh, it could be. Um, I asked my friend Mark Morris about it since he's an FLM guy. He has this exact same ball head that's been his daily driver for a long time. He's a massive FLM fan, good friend of mine, and he says that, that the click um, on his is extremely distinctive even with a heavy camera on the top which is what the case is here with my heavy kit on the top of it the click is not as distinctive if I take it off it is far far more distinctive maybe I'll quickly do that so you can try to see well I can feel it way better you can't really hear it any better but the, the clicks are extremely distinctive without the heavy kit on the top uh, okay, so uh, a couple of other differences between, so we've talked about the 15 degree stop. Oh yeah, another thing. If, if you needed to, for some reason, you wanted to move your tripod and you didn't want to lock the tuning knob all the way down, uh, or there may be other use cases why you wouldn't want it to pan, but if you, uh, if you move it to zero degrees on the scale here and you press in that 15 stop, um, 15, uh, yeah, 15 degree stop, it locks the panning in place. And so now the, the pan is kind of temporarily locked where, um, and then you can just release it, let go of the knob and, and it turns again. So at zero, kind of push it in and now it's, and then it locks into place. And again, this doesn't kind of work super consistently. Maybe it's this ball head that's having a problem or the heavy kit, but, um, but it, it doesn't, it, the button doesn't stay in all the time, and um, so it, I don't know how useful a feature it ends up being to, to have that. Just something I read in the user's manual to, to do it. Another difference between the FLM and my Siru is this tilt knob. Siru doesn't have this at all. What is, this tilt is trying to do is make it so that you can, when it's tightened all the way, it's supposed to make it so that the camera only goes up and down vertically rather than side to side. Try to restrict the side to side movement. But if, if I loosen it all the way out, and then, and in fact, I'll, I'll take off the memory even so I can just loosen it entirely so that it is totally free to move. And then I tighten down the tilt side to side, it definitely added some tightening so that up and down motion is, is pretty free and side to side is tougher, but it absolutely doesn't prevent the side to side movement. You can see that I'm, I'm moving the camera side to side fairly easily, but it is harder than the up and down. So as a feature on the tripod, I like the idea for sure. I love that, that FLM is thinking about things like this, but as a feature, uh, I don't find it to be super compelling, at least how it's implemented on this ball head. It doesn't really um, prevent me from moving the camera side to side, but I, I like the idea. I like that they're, they're thinking of that. That's, uh, that's pretty much it for the features for this, this uh, ball head, the CB48 ball head. 
it's a solid solid ball head really really nice ball head it again competes in kind of the really right stuff category of ball heads where the build quality you should expect to be superior and that it's going to last for a very long time this is why a lot of photographers will say buy once cry once because the combination of the legs and the ball head is going to be close to a thousand dollars and so um so it, it it's super super high quality it's also a, an investment that you'd have to make you're probably going to buy this once and have it for a really long time especially if you can take care of the legs i talked about that in in another video so you should go check that out if you're interested in hearing me review the cp30 legs that this is on um, i like my siru ball head it's served me extremely well and i'd still recommend it for hobbyists or beginning photographers who may not want to be jumping all the way to this higher quality version of a tripod leg and ball head the um the i have recommendations over phototacopodcast.com on gear for hobbyists where you get kind of the sweet spot based on my experience with gear the sweet spot of price to performance where you get enough of what you need out of the equipment without buying top of the line which is what more of the FLM market is at very very nice tripod legs and ball head and this is kind of sufficient <laughs> tripod leg and ball head that I've got here so not really comparable one to another I just wanted to kind of demonstrate the differences and and what you have the features that are here in the FLM ball head so there you go that's uh, that's the FLM CB48 ball head. If you liked this review, please subscribe to the channel. Love to have you do that. And I really want you to check out phototacopodcast.com. There's a search bar there. You can search for so notes. If you have questions about photography, I probably have an episode that covers it. Go over to phototacopodcast.com. There's also links there to figure out how to subscribe to the podcast. It's a monthly show where I bring on expert guests to talk through technical topics or research a topic until I'm the expert and can, can speak to it. So I'd love to have you subscribe to that. Go visit that episode. I'll have um, uh, sh the link to Photo Taco Podcast in the detail below. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you'll check out other videos on my channel, and I'll see you later.